muscle is a locomotor and the locomotor possesses maximum elasticity so the, like i said the difference between knee and someone else could be the joint mobility so hip joint is surrounded by muscles like glutes adductors pelvic floor muscles correct abductor that which is part of gluteal group knee joint is surrounded by your quads correct your hamstring that is quadriceps and hamstring and the ankle joint is surrounded by your calf muscles so everyone and each one of us probably know that that muscle need to be flexible enough but we tend to forget one part which most fitness coaches don't talk about so i'm not praising my own self i also came to know about this thanks to dr aaron horshik i hope i pronounced his last name right so he's the founder of squat university wherein i came to know about a brilliant physiotherapist of course where i came to know about the structure of the hip joint that affects the anatomy of the hip joint that affects the squat but before going into the details of the anatomy let's first start with how to stand now i'm i'm about 5 ft 10 5 10 and a half so the distance between my feet is nothing but base of support like i said it's stance the way you stand but it is also your base of support so the base of support should balance your entire structure are you getting my point now in my case when it comes to my comforts when it comes to my given joint mobility and my grace for the moment my stance that is distance between my heels i like to keep it as per my shoulder width so this is the tip of the shoulder and my heels are right below my shoulder in one straight line it's the deltoid that is popping out correct outside my heels but if you talk about frame to frame that is from the tip of the shoulder to the other tip of the shoulder that's my shoulder width of the skeletal system so my heels are placed directly below my shoulder and as you can see right now my toes are slightly pointed out to be very specific you are see from top if i see myself from top my left foot is at 10 o'clock and my right foot is at 2 o'clock now why do i do so i shall elaborate later now the reason i'm standing barefoot so that you can see the arch uh, i just want anybody to send a thumbs up if they can see my foot arch is it visible are my feet visible i can't see the comment yes i can see the comment thank you now the arch is not collapsing can you see the difference if my foot collapses that's called overpronation the foot collapse see how my entire lower extremity collapses along with it so you all have seen me squatting barefoot you all have seen my clients squatting barefoot and why do i do so now when you stand barefoot your heels and toe they are flat on the ground but the moment you start wearing shoes be it of weight lifting shoes be it of anything the foot is slightly elevated what i mean by that right now you can see that both my toe and heels are flat they are nicely grounded but the moment the moment you wear shoe because of the heels underneath the shoe because of that wedge your foot is slightly elevated so without knowing your center of gravity your body's balance is slightly leaning forward now let me ask you a simple question that when we use indian toilet to defecate when we sit down to use indian toilet to potty that is defecation now do you ever use olympic weightlifting shoe it's quite funny that when you see baby when you see toddlers when you see kids sitting down or when you see farmers sitting in their farm on their haunches they don't use weightlifting shoes neither do i when i use indian style toilet to defecate so you do not need fancy accessory to sit down and if you do need fancy accessories to sit down to give you the full range of motion that means there is lot of room for improvement when it comes to joint mobility so the first and foremost that you all have to work around is to be able to sit down comfortably without using shoes on your haunches so you can see me from front i'll show you from both the sides i can sit down comfortably on my haunches 
and I'll describe the form later how to do it and you can see it from the side also yes, both feet are visible quite comfortably now the difference between squat as an exercise and using Indian toilet to defecate actually there is no difference the only difference between Indian toilet and the squat is in case of Indian toilet we slacken and we relax but we are sitting down on haunches but with respect to squat we are not relaxed that's the only difference so let me just elaborate the difference between two what I just said so here I'll show you what Indian toilet is you can see that my spine is slightly slackened my calves and my hamstrings are united and actually I am already sinking down I am relaxed now the difference between Indian toilet and squat this is squat can you see the difference it is noticeable I will repeat using of Indian toilet body is relaxed nicely relaxed slackened and now you simply get your spine into an erect posture you raise your hips slightly high now this is called as to grass squat whatever you call it ATG but again slackened tightness slackened tighter so you see the difference isn't that much it is noticeable but not that much so your joint mobility should be so good that without using any accessories you should be able to sit down comfortably without falling forward without losing balance now there are certain factors that will allow you to do so so factor number one is ability of your foot to maintain its arch now I have a condition called not flat feet but collapsed arch what I mean by that so I am born with an arch my arch is visible so I do have an arch so I am not born with something called flat feet but see if I don't take care of my stance if I don't stand with lot of conscious thought my foot collapses watch it is already collapsed so I really really have to stand in a such a way that I don't let it collapse watch it again if I consciously lose my thought the foot collapses see it collapses in it collapses in it collapses in so how do I consciously train myself and how do I convince my client to use my foot as a tripod the kind of tripod that I'm using right now to hold and support my phone now your foot has three points of reference to be considered as a tripod so point number one is am I visible? yes the base of the toe the base of the first toe so your thumb let me just show you yes so this is your first toe so the base of the first toe the base of the first toe is your point one point A that's your last finger so the base of the last finger is your point B and the center of the heel is your point C now here you can see my arch see so I am not born with flat feet but I have developed a condition called a collapsed arch so when I stand on my feet it collapses so watch again point A the base of first toe point B the base of the fifth toe and the center of the heel is called base of point C so I would consider these three point like three points of tripod so let me go back to it <clears throat> yes so when you stand simply stand you are not supposed to squat yet when you stand in your stance feel your tripod and what I mean by feel your tripod you should never feel your body weight on point A and 2 right now I can see that my body weight I can sense that my body weight is shifted to point A and B right now I can sense my body weight is shifted on point C 
So, if your body weight is shifted on point A and B, that happens because of shoes, because the wedge keeps your heel slightly elevated. So, your center of gravity, your body balance is already leaning forward. And I'm sure a lot of time you have seen people leaning forward excessively and that is purely because of shoe. Now, so that's your three reference points, point A, B and C. So when you stand, make sure that all three points are nicely activated. So if I shift on point B, my foot, my thumb will come up, my big toe, the first toe will come out. If my foot collapses in, it means I am putting added load on the base of the first toe. So all three points, point A, point B and point C, all should be solid. And if you can see it, you should be able to see shadow underneath your arch, which means the arch is visible. So activate all this point. It's like consider your foot to be like your palm. Now how see how wide your palm can spread. So that's your base of support. Now you cannot spread your fingers so wide. That is purely because urbanization and modern lifestyle, the kind of shoes we wear, they crunch your toe from the front. So the base of support is actually getting narrower. Now, unfortunately, as it gets narrower, it becomes stiffer. The fingers actually collide against each other. Now I'll show you something correct in my next episode. There's something called toe separator. So it's a simple device that you put between your fingers of your toe and it separates your toe. It stretches your toe. So basically your base of support returns to normal. You have to wear it for about 10-15 minutes. I'll talk about it later in my next episode. So once you learn how to activate your tripod, your nice base of support, then second thing would be placement of the toe. Now here is the big question and this is the remarkable thing that will make huge difference in your squat. Now you can see me, my toes are pointed slightly out and that is because my hip joint. Now hip joint is a part, is a type of a joint which is considered as a ball and socket joint. So the hip bone has a socket and the thigh bone is connected. The ball of the thigh bone is connected inside the socket. Now the socket can be like a saucer, like a cup, cup and cup and saucer. The saucer is shallow. Now because of the shallowness of the saucer, the ball has enough room to move. But if the cup, if the ball is deeper, it has a better hold over the ball. So I repeat, if the hip joint, if the part of the hip joint, if the socket is shallow, the ball has enough space to move, a lot of freedom of mobility. But if the socket has is, if the socket is deeper, then it has a better hold over the ball. So there is limited range of motion. Now this is relative. So this is called anatomical difference between Kamlesh and anatomical difference between someone else. Now my hip joint is relatively deeper. That socket is relatively deeper. So the amount of hip mobility I have, not because of the tightness and stiffness around of the soft tissues, soft tissues like my ligaments, my tendons, my glutes, my adductor. So for a fairly muscular, for a fairly average muscular guy, I am relatively flexible and the credit entirely goes to my stretches. So despite having enough soft tissue mobility, the reason why my hip joint is not as mobile as an elite Olympic lifter who practices snatch and clean and jerk and that is because of this anatomical difference. Now there is nothing I can do to change the shape of my socket. It is God given. So what I have to do is, I stand in a way where my toes are slightly pointed out. Now because of this, I have to direct my knees in the direction of my toes. Now you can see that the space between my knees at the start and the space between my knees at the bottom is different. There is a lot of space between my knees. Now why do I have to do that? So anatomically, when, the, when I sit down, so the angle at the hip joint is getting shorter. So that's called flexion. But at the same time, my thigh bone is going away 